Hey everybody, it's Dr. Johnny and welcome to our webinar, Seven Tips for Surviving the Holidays. Well, the first thing I want to do is make a confession. I'm not going to give you seven tips. They're just There was a great uh, Google Images for this particular title and I just couldn't resist it and it didn't have one that said one major tip for surviving the holidays. But basically, the real truth is that there's really only one. There's really only one that you need to know, one category of tips that you need to know. And we're going to talk about that. And I hope that I will, uh, by the time we're done, you'll understand why this is really the only challenge that you have to really deal with over the holidays, at least when it comes to weight gain and health. Um, so let's start by looking at what the problem is. What, why do people come to a, a webinar like this? Why do people feel that there is a problem about holiday weight gain? You know, what are, what are we looking at? What are we really talking about here? Well, this time of year, we're kind of subjected to a trifecta of influences, and the first of which is just absolutely ridiculously delicious food, and more of it than anybody has a right to see in a lifetime. And it seems like you see this stuff every single day, and it's really, really tempting. It's really, really tempting. And then that doesn't even get into this stuff. And believe me, if you're looking at that and going, oh my God, I feel your pain. I, I, I am drawn to this like the rest of humanity. It's very hard to resist, especially when it comes, you know, with love and with people that are, you know, wanting you to taste their, you know, favorite pie that they brought over and they haven't seen you in a long time. And having not seen you in a long time, that brings me to the third element in the trifecta, which is the family. And I know we all have wonderful family values and we love our families, but come on, this number of people that you haven't seen in a long time, it's stressful, it's hard, it brings up old relationships and old wounds, and it, it's, it just is a mess. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you have or where you come from or who you are, when you get this number of people together who haven't seen each other in a long time, it is going to present some challenges, you know? And that leads us to... The other element in our trifecta, uh, stress. And, and it, it's a very real thing, and you start to feel not, and you don't have time doing this time, so you've got more to do and more stress full time in which to do it because you've got the people and you've got the food and your schedule is all screwed up and now it seems like you have to do absolutely everything and you have less time to do it and you start to feel like this all the time or this all the time and your stress meter is going off the red zone. And this stuff has serious consequences for your hormones, right? You've been in enough webinars with me to know that this stuff is, it profoundly influences your hormones, what you think about and the kinds of situations you put yourself in. And all of this is creating hormonal chaos. And what does that do? It makes your neurotransmitters go nuts, which all influence your cravings. Remember this old saying, stressed is dessert, spelled backwards. Boy, is that true. And all these hormones, firing are, are kind of really almost impelling you to, to stock up on, on readily available calories like fat and, and, and carbohydrates because that really is what our lizard brains were designed to do when we're under stress. And then what happens to our willpower? Because willpower really is a resource and it gets diminished by stress and it gets diminished during the course of the day. So now when we might need it the most, we have the least of it because we've got all these other factors going on. So we've got this kind of trifecta of unbelievable food, a lot of stress, and really annoying people. Or the possibility of, of stress from people, because obviously everybody in our families aren't annoying and they're wonderful and we love them, but the encounters with that number of people generally produces a higher rate of stress. I think we can all agree. So we've got a kind of a trifecta of, 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 of conditions which really doesn't lead to, you know, uh, being strict about your program and your exercise and doing everything on schedule and all of that stuff. So what actually happens? What is the damage? You know, what are we talking about? What is, when the check comes, what do we really have to pay? What have we done? Well, as it turns out, we have a lot of people who think that you gain about 10 pounds and you gain it all over the holiday season. And, and you know, now you're gained 10 pounds and you do it basically between September and December. And that's a, a wide, widely held conception. It's not really true. Um, it's, it's really quite a lot less than that. It, and it's also true that you lose back half of what you gain and then, of course, the other half is 
more difficult. A lot of people don't lose it until the summer, if at all. And of course, even if it's a couple of pounds a year, it adds up. But the point is, it's really not 10 pounds. You really haven't done that much damage from a weight point of view. And in fact, this, this study, which just came out this year, 2016, they, really, they looked at three different countries, three you know, um, industrial countries, Germany, Japan, um, United States, and the weight gain was mm, between a half and two pounds. It was, it was not enormous. It was not enormous at all, rather small. So look, I can give you tips that you've heard a million times about how maybe not to eat as much. For example, don't come hungry to the big event. I mean, people do that all the time, saving my appetite for Thanksgiving dinner. No, it's a really bad idea. It's a real amateur move, as they say. Because the hungrier you come, the more you will eat and the more you will even turn off those sensors in your brain that say, hey, he's full, he's full, because you're just going to be eating so fast and so much. So that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is have some kind of breakfast or some kind of food before you get there so that you don't come starving. You know, try, try to give yourself a little advantage on that. Uh, eat a small salad before the meal starts. That's been shown to reduce, spontaneously reduce the number of calories that people um, consume during the meal. If they eat like a small 100-calorie salad, eat your protein first. That's always a good tip. And limit your choices. Pick, you know, I'm going to sample two desserts, three desserts, whatever it is. The human need for variety will often trump satiety. So your stomach could be full. You know, that waiter comes and says, hey, are you in the mood for some dessert? Got room for dessert? We all have room for dessert. Why? Well, because it's a novel taste. We may be filled with chicken or beef stew or broccoli, but mm, death by chocolate, we got a little bit of taste buds left for that particular novelty. So you really, you can go on and eat more and more and more and more and more that you didn't intend to eat if you keep sampling different things. So kind of limit your choices. Pick a couple things and say, that's what I'm going to sample. Okay, those are the, those are the kind of tips you can use to kind of control your eating. But as I said, I don't think that that's the real problem here. Like I said, there's studies that show that the amount of weight gain isn't all that much. And even in people who really do put on a lot of weight that time, it's losable. You can lose, you will lose half of it almost immediately. I don't think it's really the weight. I think it is the meaning we give that weight. Remember, we create meaning out of every situation. You lost a couple of pounds, it could mean, hmm, I lost a couple of pounds. Um, you, I mean, you gain a couple of pounds, it could just mean a couple of pounds, or it could mean, oh my God, I just can't stick to any diet. I am the biggest loser in the world. I can't do anything right. I might as well give up. I mean, you make stuff mean things, and what we do over this holiday season is we make it mean that our diet's gone to hell, our exercise pro, we can't stick with anything. Look at that. We have a bad metabolism. Now i got to start all over again. Oh, when will I start? I don't know, January 1st, and that never works out. So it's the stories we tell ourselves about these slips. These slips are not that terrible, people. You can control them with, as I said, a couple of little simple tips. Eat the protein first, eat a lot of fiber, limit your choices. That's not the hard part. The weight gain's not going to be that much. The part that's the problem is what you make this mean about yourself and about the fact, and here comes the number one thing that I promised you we were going to talk about because it's the only thing that really matters over this season. The main thing that you feel you've left or lost is control. The whole holiday Michigas, that whole hustle bustle with all that amazing food and all those wonderful choices and those desserts and all the people you haven't seen in the schedule, it's all screwed up. All of that stuff really at the bottom of it, the, the, what it's done that has the potential to be damaging is it has taken away from you the sense that you're in control. And you might wonder, well, why did I put up this beautiful slide of this, you know, internal kind of beauty thing that, you know, if you were sitting there, you'd hardly feel in control of anything. If you were sitting there in front of that ocean, you'd, you'd probably feel very small and very much a part of something bigger. But what you would also probably feel is a sort of sense of peace and serenity that comes with kind of owning what's going on, you know, owning where you are and what's, what's true for you at that moment. And that's why the number one tip to dealing with the holidays and the challenges that come with it is about gaining some control. It doesn't matter so much what you do. It doesn't even matter so much what you eat. It matters that you continue to do some exercises for your spirit, if you will, 
that give you a sense of agency, that give you a sense of being actually in the driver's seat, because that's what we lose. That's what we lose. We may gain a couple of pounds, but what we lose is bigger, which is a sense that we can't control our destinies, that we don't really, we're not in the driver's seat. That's what happens over those couple of months. It gets chipped away at. So I'm going to give you a couple of things you can do to kind of do damage control on that. Now, you see up here a picture of a daily food journal, and you probably think you know what I'm going to say. Keep a food journal. I'm not going to say that. I'm actually going to say something quite the opposite. The, a food journal doesn't really necessarily put you in control. This, the, the, the things I'm going to talk about right now in the next couple of minutes are all about subconsciously recreating your sense of control. So what I suggest with the food journal is that you do a proactive food journal. What does that mean? It means you wake up in the morning and you visualize what the day is going to be like. Maybe it is a particular day like a Thanksgiving uh, um, um, dinner or, you know, Christmas Eve or an office party or any kind of particular challenge that's going to have to do with food. And you write down in advance what you're going to eat. So you kind of picture it and say, well, I know that, you know, so-and-so is going to be there. She always brings a chocolate chip cookie, so I'm going to have two of those. And you actually visualize and write down what would be like a bullseye for you. And don't make it crazy. Don't say, I'm not going to sample the pie and I'm not. No, what would you actually, what would be something that you could manage and that would be a win for you that would allow you to indulge some of these things and, and enjoy some of these things, but would not take you, you know, into binge country and write it down. Write it down like that's going to be your choices and that's what you're going to do. And studies have shown, this is called rehearsal, and studies have shown in both piano players and in basketball players, when you take a bunch of basketball players and you have them rehearse in their mind without touching a ball or getting up from the bench, they actually spend time mentally rehearsing a three-point shot. They make it with more frequency. They make it more accurately. When you have pianists Practice a passage in their head for 30 minutes. A difficult passage, a Chopin etude, a Bach partita, a Beethoven sonata. They practice it in their head. They go over it. They actually visualize themselves making those motions and creating those sounds. When you put them at the keyboard, guess what happens? They play the piece with greater sensitivity and accuracy as measured independently by observers. So this has been shown to work. So if you actually proactively choose what you're going to eat and write it down, even if you don't hit the exact bullseye, you're going to become way closer to that. And more importantly, you're going to be get, getting a sense of control, a sense of agency. Second thing is to take a walk every day. Now, people see, see hear this recommendation. They often say, well, yeah, but you don't burn that many. This is not about burning calories. This is not about losing weight. This is not about anything except the extreme stress reduction of a 15-minute walk. And the fact that if you commit to that and you do it, you will have a sense of control. Yes, maybe you're not doing your CrossFit. Maybe you're not doing your split routine and your seven-mile runs and all of that. But you're doing something you said you would do. You're not losing complete control. You're not giving up the whole enterprise, the journey towards health and wellness and well-being. You're not giving it up. You're not taking a three-month hiatus. You're, you're limiting what you're going to do. But you're going to do what you say you're going to do, and you're going to say you take a walk every day. Almost everybody can do that. So that's a, a goal that you can set that you can actually accomplish during this time, and it will reap enormous psychological benefits. Uh, one of my great teachers, Werner Earhart, used to say, a master is in control, out of control. He used to say, you know, if we go white water rafting, guess what? The master, the Tibetan monk, the Dalai Lama, whoever it is, that, you know, who's got to complete the Buddha... Can't con the water doesn't go any faster or any slower for the Buddha. The difference is that the master, being out of control in that setting, can be in control in the midst of that chaos. That's what we're looking for here. You're going to be in chaos for a couple of months, eating chaos, family chaos, time chaos. So what we're looking for is a way to capture that center. And to, to keep that center so that you can be in control in an out of control situation. Play this game. I love this game. And yet all those people that are talking to you and after a while they start to be annoying or you start to get into discussions about the election. Or the, you know, I mean, it's just ripe for everything that can go wrong this season. So you play a game. What if you were trying to recreate that person's experience and understand where they were coming from? You weren't listening just to reply. You were listening to understand. 
and you made it a game. Just paying the attention to the needs of other people. Just for that time. Just when you want to get all frustrated and angry and eat more and drink more and stuff, what if you just played this game? How can I understand this person? What can I do to help in some small way? What if you made a to-do list? I have been using the to-do list, I think, since I started in this business as a therapeutic tool to rehabilitate your own words. So again, what's the goal here? The goal is not accomplishing things. The goal is not taking a walk to lose weight or to burn calories. The goal here is about getting control and remaining in control in some small measure, in some meaningful measure, during a season in which everything is conspiring to make us feel out of control. So I want you to make a to-do list every day. It's a special therapeutic to-do list because I don't care how important these things are. They can be simple things like I will drink a glass of water. They can be I will take my daily walk. They can be uh, whatever that will brush my teeth. They can be a little bit more than that. But this isn't about like organizing your stuff. This is about you sending a message to your brain that you're in charge. That if I say something's going to happen, I'm checking it off that list and I'm going to see my digital brain that only knows on, off, yes, no. It doesn't know shades of gray. It's going to know that I say something and it gets done and that is not what happens when somebody's out of control. So I am going to be reinforcing that sense of mastery and control even in this difficult, challenging situation. New Year's, re New Year's resolutions, don't make them on January 1st. That's my tip for that. Why? Because if you make them on January 1st like everybody else, you're not owning them. You're doing them out of habit. You're doing them out of circumstance. This little exercise we're doing here, this whole webinar, is about you being bigger than your circumstances. Your circumstances right now, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you, if they're like mine during these holidays, you're going to be exposed to food the likes of which you cannot even begin to imagine. It could feed small villages. And it's all going to be delicious, and there's going to be pressure to eat it. And there's not going to be a lot of time to exercise. You're going to feel out of control. This entire exercise is about giving you a center and a sense of control. Because guess what? If you're back in control, you will be in control of when you want to add to that to-do list. Now it's time to get back in the gym. Or now it's time to go back to day one of paleo or whatever, or, or metabolic factor, or whatever diet that you're on, or whatever eating program that you're on. You will be able to effortlessly move back into that because you've been in control the whole time. You haven't just spent two months in chaos. So you want to start that? Own your New Year's resolutions. You pick a date. Maybe it's February 22nd. Maybe it's December 10th. And when you want to make those resolutions, own them and start them and don't do it because everybody else does it January 1st. And finally, finally, and I can't even begin to emphasize how important this is, relax. You gotta relax. Stress is the biggest robber of willpower, of joy, of, of, brain, of neurons. It adds belly fat. It shortens your life. It makes diseases worse. You've got to do something about that. And you have to find time to relax. And even finding time for yourself and putting that on your to-do list can be a message to your brain that when you say this gets done, it's going to get done. Even if it means taking 10 minutes to relax, even if it means taking half an hour to do a warm bath or take a walk, you've got to find time for you. And again, not just because of its stress-lowering abilities, which are very, very powerful, but also because it's sending a message to your brain that in the midst of this chaos, you have still found some time for yourself. You have found time for your walk. You have found time to do these things on your to-do list. And you're sort of carving out that little place of sanity for yourself in the midst of this chaos. Find time to relax. It's a really, really, really... My, Emily, learn from our dogs. Emily never has a problem relaxing. That's Emily on the, on the right of your screen. And again, remember this. It's a wonderful saying. The time to relax is when you don't have the time for it. It's really important. Mm -hmm.